Hello and welcome back. Today we want to look at week three of the Road Rising series. The pilgrim is truly on his way now, traveling down a path that God has set before him. He's far into the wilderness now and already he's come up against a black bear. Now, as most bears would do in that situation, he took off, running to put as much space between himself and the man as is barely possible. And that starts the pilgrim to thinking. Why is it that just about every creature in the animal kingdom runs away from people? And then he remembered that verse in Genesis chapter 9, verse 2. Noah's ark had come to rest. Animals were disembarking. And God told Noah, The fear and dread of you will fall upon all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air, upon every creature that moves along the ground. They are given into your hands. God continues in verse 3, Everything that lives and moves will be food for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, I now give you everything. And that verse, by the way, is something to chew on if you're considering the vegan option for your diet. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not against a plant-based diet. In fact, I'm pretty much off meat myself these days because my doctor tells me that cancer loves meat and sugar and eggs, and dairy products. And so at least until I get the all clear from my own battle, I've decided to put my Texas barbecue aside. But in my case, it's for medical reasons, not because of any theological ideas that God doesn't want me to be a carnivore. So, enjoy your ribeye steak. Enjoy your mushroom and kale smoothie. And enjoy them both with God's blessing. But back to the pilgrim. The day after his encounter with the bear, he finds himself being stalked by a mountain lion. We're going to see this critter farther down the path, by the way, and it, it raises the question, if man is capable of rebellion, are the animals also? In that same chapter of Genesis, God says that he will demand an accounting of every animal. So does that mean that every bad dog, every snake in the grass, Every man-eating cat will have to answer for his behavior? Yeah, maybe we don't want to go there too far, except to take comfort in the promise that all will be made right before the throne of God. In the meantime, in the words of the pilgrim huddled around the campfire that night, Lord, keep the firewood coming. The rest of the week three brings the pilgrim to an appreciation of the beauty all around him. And as he's crossing a brook, he thinks about the process of living a life of faith. Let me read from his journal, day 11. He writes, The trail crossed the stream today, and so did I. It wasn't too big a challenge. The stream was fairly small, and well, there were plenty of rocks to step on. I know that there will be larger rivers farther down the trail and bigger challenges to faith. But this was a good beginning. There's an old proverb that says, a man can never cross a river twice because next time it will be a different river and a different man. I had to think about that. I've been following this river for two days now, and it looks the same, but I guess it is different water that I'm looking at. Life's challenges often look like previous ones as well, but there will always be something that makes each one unique. Now, I'm not the same person now that I was even last week. I've now experienced excitement, longing, boredom, fatigue, pain, and unobliterated fear. Those things have helped shape me into someone different than I was last week. Maybe that's part of the real value of this journey, the process itself. We're all being grown into kingdom children, and part of that growth is the daily routine of life. I had a child who died before he was ever born, and I suppose for him, maturity came in an instant. But for the rest of us, there is that blessing of process, whereby we grow, step by step, into what God has created us to be. I may come up against the river again farther downstream, 
but I know the crossing won't be the same. It will be a different river, and I will be a different man. Whether you're a man, a woman, or a child, I hope you can see the importance of process in your life, especially in this age of increasing speed, whether it be cars or planes. I mean, look at it. Television dramas resolve most issues in 30 minutes or less, not counting commercials. And internet searches, well, hey, they'll often give you the answer before you're finished typing the question. I can say from experience that your life is picking up speed. And more often than not, you're not even aware of it. But if you're as old as I am, I think you can identify with that time when you look back over your shoulder and all those years just seem to have snuck up on you in an instant. So rather than look for shortcuts and time savers, I would encourage you today to look closely at the process into which God has placed you. Instead of trying simply to get through it, stop and see what the process itself might have to offer. You might be surprised. May your discoveries this week be delightful ones. May you be better equipped than before to face whatever comes your way tomorrow. I hope you'll join me again next week. God bless your journey. Y'all come back now, dear. Run for your life is one possibility, and at the time, probably the answer I would have liked most to hear. Or if not that, fill some buckets, or start a backfire, or dig a hole.